Jared Poland Fronosphoto.com. And I'm here with the raw edit of the week, number 54, and it's brought to you by Alan's camera. Uh, this is this incredible photo uh, that it's like two photos in one, and it's going to be interesting to see what direction that I take this because it's, it's pretty unique. Uh, so let me get back into my development module here. I'm probably going to do some black and white and color, just basic stuff. But there were some really, really interesting ones, and I'll get to those uh, edits that you guys did for the video for your raw edits of the week. Some really interesting things. I, don't, I just feel that it needs to be warmed up. It feels just so cold, but when you warm it up, it kind of gets gives it that old feel, like a National Geographic type photo. I love what's going on over here in the background. Pump up my contrast a little bit. A little bit of fill in the foreground here. Let's see what some vibrance and saturation does too much. Do that. I really want to do something over here in the background. Oops. Let's rotate this around and see what we got. Get rid of that. Try that again right up here. Let's change this a little bit. I love that. Look at that. Let's bring it in a little further. Undo that. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's play with this a little bit. Was that there before? All this white cloud stuff is there before? That's really interesting. That's an interesting cloud formation up there. Oh well, we're just gonna keep going with this and see what we come up with. Some contrast jewels. I know, it's it's pretty interesting photo. Here we go. So I'm gonna do that. Some more contrast in the back. See, that really makes the background look interesting. We're going to just pull it back a little bit more. Just go like that a little bit. Uh, I like my yellow. Let's see what the tint, what we can do with that. Now, I don't, I don't like the um, cyanish look ever, or that too green, and I don't like too magenta. So we're going to go with... We're going back to zero on that one. I like where that's at. The foreground's throwing me off a little bit. I don't think this is the most uber duber spectacular type of edit ever. I don't like that at all either. We got some we're gonna we're gonna happy paint right here. We're gonna happy paint. Just like Bob Ross. Beautiful. Beautiful happy trees. So there we go. I opened it up a little bit. I'm just gonna stop with this. This you know, it's interesting. It's not it's just interesting. So I'm going to save this as snapshot one. And let's reset and go to, well, let's see what black and white looks like if I just go to black and white right off the bat. Boom. I threw some fill light in, and then I'm throwing, filling back in with the black levels. It's very, very interesting. Let's see what a, a um, post-crop vignette would look like today. No, too much, too much. So we're just going to turn that off with that switch right there. This is way hard. Harsh, harsh. It's a very harsh image right here now in black. But I'm going to stop at this. So we can move on to see what Adam did. These are my two. We've got the black and white. We've got the color. Not the easiest edit ever. Not the easiest photo in the world ever to edit. Um, being that it's like two totally different images in one. But, you know, I'm going to go with this. I know I've seen some. You could also do like a mad, a mad, 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 mad crop if you really, really wanted to. And you could just be like. Just a little bit more. You could be like, boom. 
but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it. Well, you know what? I like the background that much that I'm going to give it a third. We'll do a third edit just to draw the background in for this crop. I just don't want to get the bottom of the mountain in. I don't want to get right there. Good, we don't have any tree in there. Boom. There's edit number. Well, actually, you know what? Take it to the extreme now that we're going to play with it. Get back to that. It's still so interesting. That's very, very yellow. Right there. And we'll just call this number three just for the fun of it. Uh, Adam, it is your turn to have a go, and let's see what you came up with. Adam Lerner, and welcome to this week's Raw Edit number 54. And uh, this is a really interesting landscape. I think um, it's called Patagonia. And uh, I believe that this is an image that's been kind of floating around in the raw submitted file for a while or a folder. And uh, it was time to pull this out of the archive. And this is a really impressive shot. Um, there's just so much, so much detail in here and so many different layers. And it almost looks surreal. It almost looks like an HDR, but it's not. It's a single exposure. Um, 1 100th at F20. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so we've got, we've got a lot, a lot of detail going in here. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, I think that, you know, rather than just going straight, um, you know, uh, just punching everything up and making the sky blue or blah, blah, blah. I think a little split toning would be kind of interesting on here just to give it a little bit of a vibe. Um, however, when I first saw this, I really was thinking silvery black and white. So, um, we're going to start with a color edit, and uh, I think we're going to go right into a black and white after that. So um, let us go into here right now, and uh, we will go into, um, we'll add a little bit of color, temperature, sorry. And we're going to add some, well, we're not going to add any exposure. We're going to add some blacks. Just pump that up a little bit. Just want to add a little bit of fill, just somewhere around there. I uh, definitely want to add some contrast. Not too much, because, you know, we don't want to lose too much of that detail. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we don't want to go too crazy with that. We go there. Definitely want to add clarity. You can see all the detail kind of coming up in this region over here when we add that clarity. I'm going to go somewhere around the... up. Oh, that was contrast. Sorry. Clarity. We're going to bring that over there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I want to add a little vibrance. I'm going to add a little saturation. I just want to kind of pump these things up. Going to add a little more fill. Just get a little more detail in here. And I might actually back the exposure down just a touch. Somewhere, somewhere like that. Let's look at the before. Let's look at the after. I really like what's going on with this. And we've just kind of barely begun. Strong contrast. Um, yeah, I kind of like what that's doing there too. Um, I'm just going to bring the highlight detail down just a little bit. And uh, let's see what we got. Um, I want to do a little bit of sharpening. So I'm going to go into the detail mode here. And, you know, this stuff right in the forefront really looks sharp here. Um, so I'm going to grab that. It's going to bring up the sharpening a bit. <clears throat> mask it off for the edge detail, not the texture. Let's keep going to about there. That's super nice. Um, you know, just on its own, it's really cool. I mean, we could go into the HSL and we could, like, bring up the blue, or bring, you know, we could do stuff like this. Um, that's kind of cool. That luminance will go into the saturation, do the same thing. Bring up more blues, maybe get some of these greens really happening. Oh, not the aqua. Maybe a little bit of these accents of orange and yellow. Do the same thing in here. And if we go to the before and after, you can see that that really gives it a really vibrant look. <clears throat> so I'm going to save that as snapshot one. Now, bearing this in mind, 
I was talking about doing some split toning. So I'm going to do so. i um, going to do highlights with kind of a yellowish glow and shadows with a bluish glow. And then we're just going to kind of go from there. And uh, I already kind of like what's going on here. It's got a little bit more of a kind of vintagey look, which I like. So let's just get the uh, highlight color into a place that, that that's happy for me. And I'm going to keep it about there. I like what's going on with that. And then as far as the shadow detail, um, I tend to go more in the magenta route. So I'm going to leave it about there. Um, and let's go for some kind of a balance here. Bring that down. No, we're going to go up with that. We're going to leave that about there. And let's look at the before and let's look at the after. You know, I really like what's going on in there. I mean, it just has kind of like this almost surreal kind of look to it, which is which is kind of what this image is about. It's a little surreal, you know, with all these different textures and layers and stuff. So we're going to just add a little bit more fill light to that. And uh, I'm going to leave that as my split toned edit number two. Now, I want to get into a black and white. So I'm going to hit the V key. And we're going to retain all the settings that we have here. Um, I'm going to turn off split toning just for the time being. And wow, look at that. That is beautiful. Uh, I'm just going to make a slight adjustment here. We bring the color temperature down a little bit. And um, let's see, we're going to add a little more fill. A little bit of more blacks. Going to add some more contrast. Let's see how far we want to go with that. Because we don't want to lose too much detail. Let's see where we are. You know what? I'm not going to actually... Let me just have a little play with this. Going to keep it about there, actually. Clarity. We definitely want the clarity in there. And clarity is almost at 100% and looking pretty good. So let's just see how that looks over there. Um, I quite like that. I almost want to bring in a little more blacks somewhere around there. And let's look at the before and the after. Um, that has kind of an epic look to it, if you really want to think about it. And then um, I have like this uh, this toning here that I wanted to add. And it's, uh, let's just add this over here right now. Um, and I think I really like what that's doing over there. You know, it gives it kind of more, more of a steely look. Um, it just kind of shifted the HSL just a little bit over there. But um, I really kind of like <clears throat> what this is doing. It's kind of got like all those nice silvery tones. I like all the detail that we have over here. Um, I like what's going on with this tree. Um, maybe just a little more fill in that tree. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to do it for my black and white edit. So here we go. We've got our kind of punched up color edit. We've got our split toned color edit. And we've got our semi-toned black and white edit. So those are my edits, and uh, let's go off and see what Jared's got. Here we go. We've got six edits this week. We've got three up top from Adam. We've got three down at the bottom from me. And Adam, I had trouble with this. This was a definitely a tough edit for me to wrap my head around, uh, not normally doing landscape photos, but you seem to have done a really, really good job, especially in uh, this color one. I kind of like it a lot. Thanks, man. I um, I originally looked at this photo and I thought, my gosh, it's f22. Everything's in focus. There's so many different planes of um, focal planes in this image here. You know, what am I gonna what am I gonna really concentrate on? Then I realized, you know what, I've got to really look at this as a whole. And I thought, you know, let's go for the really kind of silvery black and white. But in the course of doing so, I also thought, you know, what what would a split tone color look like? And I think like you, um, I really tend to favor that one as well. Um, I think that it, you know, it brings out a lot of the detail, um, you know, in, in, in all the different areas. You know, you've got some nice tones on the, on the mountains in the back. Um, and uh, I, I liked where that went. Um, I think it was also tough because, you know, in punching up the black point and the contrast like you did, it gives it a, a lot of impact. But at the same time, you lose a little bit of detail and subtlety from it. So I think that... You know, one thing we were just kind of talking about a little bit earlier is, you know, something like, you know, using like uh, Color Effects Pro or, or Silver Effects Pro where you can actually set control points to manually edit or manipulate certain areas or even taking it a bit further and bring it into Photoshop. 
um, you know, would probably be the, the right course because to try, try to do a five minute edit of this image, I, I think it's just really complex. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, what I was going for in mind was punchy, of course, and I wanted to try to bring the background in, so I went in and and separated the, the the two angles and did a separate edit on the background and different than the foreground. And I came in here and I painted some like Bob Ross style dodging. Um, nice. And then obviously for this was a was an uber duber crop just to try something different, which is pretty amazing. I mean, look at how sharp that is, considering that that's like a crop of just a, it's a D90. Yeah. And that's a crop of just the top, you know, corner of the frame. So that's that's a pretty impressive frame that, it is. that we've got here. And, I, and like you alluded to a couple seconds ago, that this is probably an edit that needed to go into a separate program like Photoshop. Um, you know, it's not something that you can give do too much justice to in five minutes, but it would be really interesting to see somebody like a, a Photoshop master like Gavin Hoey to see what he would mm. do with this. And I'm going to send it to him. I didn't even think about that before, but I'll see if he'll go ahead and make a video just to see what he would do with a file like this. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm totally okay with people going into Photoshop with any of these raw edits. Oh yeah, just to see what they come up with because if you use the tools that are in front of you and that's how you get to the proper or get to what you think is a good image, then by all means go ahead and take it into Photoshop, take it into sure. Silver Effects Pro, do whatever you want because it's your chance to show everybody what you can do with your edit. Yeah, and I think something, you know, like you said earlier, you know, you kind of had a Bob Ross kind of, um, you know, painterly uh, approach to this. You know, a, a, an image like this, a landscape of this magnitude is somewhat like a painting. There's so many different zones. There's so many different areas. You know, I could really see this being blown up huge, almost like, you know, how like you'd have like in a kid's room, like an entire wall image of this. That was big in the 1979s. <laughs> you know what, though? It, it, it's coming back. And I love I've it. actually seen a few offices um, I visited. Um, recently where they've been doing that kind of thing and uh, anyway I just think that you know there, there's there is a lot going on here and like you said before there is no one way to edit I think you and I spend a lot of time in Lightroom because you know of its file management capabilities and, and its ease of use but I think in this case it does it would make a lot of sense to you know maybe take it a, a bit further sure and, and I'd probably be calling a photo editor <laughs> I'd probably be like okay let me go find who the editor is that could m really make this image to do something better than what I can do with this, because I don't think that this is my style, you know, bringing something out like the landscape. I mean, I gave well, it a... Yeah, and the other thing is that, you know, I don't think you would necessarily even be compelled to shoot this. No, you know, I mean, so it, would, it would be interesting to be in the situation and see what we came up with, but you're right. It, it's, right. you know, I am not a landscape photographer, but the challenge of trying something different is definitely always enticing to see what you come up right. with. But no, this, this is definitely a longer form edit that you would probably take into a separate program and, and go from there. But I, I like, you know, you've got your edit, your, your black and white. I know there's a lot of tone. You, you up the forum. I see that there's a lot of folks out there that have been doing some really incredibly cool edits with this. And, um, you know, I think that the, the image just has a lot of possibility. Yeah, and, and, and part of having an image with, like, the the mountain in the background, and, I mean, this is a, a special type of image. It's really unlike anything that I've really seen myself. Um, it actually looks like there's a glacier down here now that I look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know where I was going. Oh, yes, it, it, the multiple edits, like this is totally HDR fodder, you know, if, mm. if to see what HDR would come up with this, because it seems like it's two photos. You've got the photo here in the foreground, you have the photo here in the background, putting them both together into two different types of edits uh, and then mishmashing them would probably work well in that. And I've seen a bunch of that in the forum, and that's why I can't wait to bring you your raw edits of the week uh, when we're done with this one. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, so add nice job this week, as always, and uh, this is, what, week 54, so next week is 55, and if you haven't oh. downloaded some of the early, early raw files, feel free to go back through the forum and download all 50, f currently 54 of them, and have fun with them. Nice. All right, Ad, I will uh, right. see you next time, and everybody, great job out there. Check out those screen flows and raw edits that everybody did. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.